Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and today I want to give you some terrific tips on how to take care of your hydrangeas in July. So here I am with a whole bunch of my mop head hydrangeas and what I'm going to do is take a look at some of the blooms that are kind of spilling over the garden bed right now because I want to do a quick little cleanup. Some of the you know hydrangeas started drooping over because they had a lot of growth this year and we had a lot of rain so they're starting to kind of droop over. They're starting to come out of the garden bed but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and trim some of them and most of the time you don't want to prune back your hydrangeas in summer at all. It's usually never a good idea but I'm not actually doing like a heavy pruning. I'm just doing a quick little cleanup. So what I'm going to do is take a look at some of these branches that are kind of spilling out over the garden bed and I'm going to give them a clip but instead of throwing them out I'm going to use them uh, to propagate another hydrangea from the clippings. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give the hydrangea a clipping. First of all, I'm going to clip it right above a set of new leaves because that's going to encourage this branch to give me two more hydrangeas that will come from that stem next year. So that's the first thing that I did. Second thing I'm going to do is strip off the bottom of the leaves, like just the bottom set of leaves here. And I'm going to cut the big, you know, fat leaves that are here. So I'm going to cut those in half for all that. And that's it. So then I'm going to take this clipping, I'm going to give the bottom of the stem a scraping because this is where all those roots are going to start coming from. So I'll give it a scraping, take off a little bit of that top layer. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of rooting hormone. There's a whole bunch of different rooting hormones that you can find online. Okay. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to dip it in this little, like an old planting pot that I had like bought a different uh, flower with. It's got some drainage on the bottom, which is really important. And I'm just going to put it in a mixture of vermiculite and perlite and pop it right in here. I'll probably do one or two per pot and rest them against the edge. You want an easy way to kind of divide them. So you don't want to put all these little stems on top of each other. And you might only do like two per pot or even one per pot because eventually after a couple of weeks, you're going to have gorgeous roots that come from the bottom of this plant and it's going to be a brand new hydrangea. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. And I'm going to have beautiful, beautiful roots on this plant in just a few weeks. So now another thing that I'm going to do is come in here and take a look at some of these gorgeous blooms that are now dried off. Now this happens to be one of the repeat bloomers. So it's a Moppet Hydrangea that has two sets of blooms that come in. Some of them do that. And the old ones come in on like this old wood. So all these blooms were put in place last August and now they're in full bloom now, it's July, but you know, it's towards the end of the season, they're getting a little bit tired, we had a lot of sun, they're getting kind of washed out. So what I wanna do is give them a little bit of a deadheading. So I'm not doing a heavy pruning, I'm not cutting these stems back all the way down here, I'm just kind of cleaning up the plant a bit. So I'm gonna cut off some of these blooms because I wanna save space for the second set of blooms that are gonna come in towards like the end of summer. So I'm gonna clean up some of these flowers, but I don't wanna get rid of them because they're gorgeous and they actually look almost like the antique dried flower ones that you might've seen like in your grandmother's house when you were growing up. And so what we're gonna do is just put them in little vases as we're you know, actually building out the plant. And this one has a mixture of dried Annabelle hydrangeas. So these are all dried out. These are fresh mop head hydrangeas. And I'm gonna mix the dried ones with this. And it's just a really beautiful look. So you don't have to worry about you know, throwing them out and they'll hopefully eventually dry out to a beautiful dried arrangement. I find that Nico hydrangeas are one of the most beautiful hydrangeas to dry out to make dried flower arrangements. Another thing I'm going to do is kind of trim back some of the tall, lanky growth that I have. So this is like a beautiful, beautiful hydrangea hedge, but there's some of them that just like, you know, really had spectacular growth, but it looks a little wonky. So these guys, even though they're coming in on that old wood, I am going to cut them back just to kind of keep the plant in check. I'm going to give it a clip down here and I'll know that, you know, listen, next year I would have had, you know, like taller hydrangeas that came in on this new growth, but it's just getting too tall. So for this guy, I am going to clip him back just a bit just to kind of keep everything in check. 
And this way it doesn't look quite so giant, like popping out of nowhere. But once again, I'm gonna use these in bud vases around my house. I'm going to build out smaller dried hydrangea arrangements out of them. Guys, another thing I'm going to do, and you could do this anytime during the season, is to cut out any dead, damaged, or diseased stems. So like this guy is totally dead. You can tell it had no growth this year. So I know that I can cut this out all the way at the base of the plant and it's just gonna save the hydrangea the work of supporting this dead stem. Also over here, I see that this hydrangea got pummeled over here. Clip off some of, you know, the, the things that got pummeled by the water. And in here, there are some more dead ones that just are not doing very well. So for this guy, I'm gonna come and trim him. Okay, I'm just gonna get the dead stuff out. And the last thing I'm going to do uh, in July is I'm going to give just my rebloomers that I think can use a little shot of fertilizer, a little shot of fertilizer. So I don't do this every year. Actually, a lot of years I don't fertilize at all, but I'm seeing I've got tremendous new growth coming in and I really wanna have some beautiful, beautiful blooms. So I wanna give them just a little bit of a boost this year. And we just came out of like a really, really big heat wave. So I know that everybody's kind of tired, they're kind of exhausted. And so what I'm going to do is give it just a little shot of rose tone. A lot of times I'll just use some rose tone as a fertilizer. I'll give it a little bit of a sprinkling around the base of the plant. I know other people like to use, you know, different types of fertilizers. This isn't a brand endorsement. So whatever fertilizer that you like, I would give it, if your plant needs it, that little sprinkling towards like the middle of July just to kind of give those rebloomers a reboost. But you don't have to do this. Well, I don't, I don't usually do this for my Annabelle hydrangeas or for my limelight hydrangeas because those guys do not give me, you know, like that second flush of blooms. And I don't want to over fertilize my hydrangeas because if you over fertilize, you'll wind up with beautiful green leaves and you won't have that many blooms if there's too much fertilizer in the soil. So always err on the side of, you know, the least amount of fertilizer uh, that you can do. And basically that's what I'm doing for my hydrangeas in July. And guys, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining us in this video and please say hi to us over on my cranberry fields instagram page you can also find us on TikTok, and i made a whole bunch of podcasts for you you can find those wherever you listen to your podcast and please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world i love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week also check out our kelly lehman's flower tribe facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there and know that YouTube has allowed me to have a super thanks uh, button attached to this channel. And if you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee or I'll let us know if you appreciate these videos, uh, that would be terrific. Or you could just give us a like or a comment below. I would appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.